Hello, this is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a paper cake. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video below. All the materials and the template will be linked below the video. You could use my template to cut it through the Cricut, Silhouette, or other cutting machines, but you could also print my pattern and hand cut them for those that don't have a cutting machine. You'll need two circles in blush, six meringue pattern in off-white color, four rectangle pattern also in blush, two scallop pattern in white cream color. You could also try this in other color options and adjust the sizing to other sizes, but I have my suggested size that I'll be making for this video listed in the template. First, grab the rectangular pattern and score the edge with the jagged edges and do this to all four of them. If you don't have a scoring board, you could grab a ruler and a scoring tool and score it. Then fold the tabs all on one side. Next, take white glue that I'll be linking below and glue that to the bottom of the tabs and start forming this onto the circle on the rim. This white glue will give you enough time to adjust before it fully sets, so I would recommend the white glue instead of hot glue. After you glue the first piece, it should only cover half the side, and this is the longest side of a letter-sized paper, so if you happen to have longer length paper, it could be one piece, or you could make a smaller one and just use one piece, which would look cleaner. But I'll be adding a second piece on the other side and finish the rest of the circle. Make sure to glue the ends as well. Then do the same to the other circle and two rectangular pattern the same way. Hold it down as you go and take your time to nicely align the tabs to the circle. Then you should have a top and bottom and you could put that on top of each other. I like to have the two together so it stabilizes this round box and makes it more sturdy instead of just having one cylinder. Next, take the scallop pattern and lightly glue along the pattern and add that towards the top half of the cake. And this is optional, you could put it wherever you like. You could also make this in other colors and get creative with these scallops. If you are hand cutting them, the circles on the top of the scallop pattern will be harder to cut by hand, so you could just roughly cut a scallop pattern without the circles. Add the other scallop pattern to finish going around. Next, I had this white round box I found at the store and thought I'd just try doing the same thing to this box. If you wanted the box to be more sturdy and more box-like, then you could cover up a round box and do the same thing. I did adjust the sizing and cut off extra sides to make the rectangular pattern shorter, and then I added the circle on top to cover it up. I think the regular paper cake without the box looks great as a decoration, but this box will be perfect to add candy or gifts in the inside. Once you cover the box, you could also add the scallops, and don't forget when you are adjusting the sizes, you'll need to adjust the sizes to the scallops too. You'll need to multiply the diameter of the circle with pi and find the circumference. It's okay if it's off by a little bit because we will have a lot of embellishments to cover it up. And worst comes to worst, we'll just make the area that may have flaws be the backside of our cake. Next, we are taking the pattern that will be our frosting to the cake. It looks like a teardrop shape, and I have two versions of this, with one a little smaller and the other a little bit bigger. Each set will have three small ones, and you stack them on top and crease it down the middle, and add glue down the center where the crease is and stack them back up by gluing them and it should have a total of three then open each layer up gently and it should have a flat back and that's where you'll glue and add that to the rim of the cake you could use hot glue to go faster when you are adding it to the cake i think i added 22 going around the bigger cake i think you could even resize this frosting pattern and make it bigger so you can make less and it'll look more fluffier next i'll be doing the same with the bigger frosting pattern that also looks like a teardrop and i'll be adding that to the bottom of the cake and i think i added a total of 20 with each set having three of these shapes stacked and glued to the center and reopened to make the frosting like lines. Next will be the meringues. This flower like shape, you'll be just folding it down towards the center and go in order as it overlaps on top as you go in the circle. Then, towards the last two sections, you want to make sure they are going to be tucked into the first piece so we could close it off. 
No glue is really required and it should just stay in place. But if you feel like it unravels, then tightly close it down and crease on the bottom side to force it down. Then make as many as you like, but I made six of them with five of them going around in the top and one is going in the center of the cake. Next will be the cherries. There is no template for this. I take tissue paper and it doesn't have to be red. It could be any color. I just happen to have this red. Then take floral wire. And again, mine happened to be white, but you could use green and it really doesn't matter about the color. Then bunch up the tissue paper and add the floral wire and curl the wire around the tissue paper. Then roll the tissue paper around the wire, kind of turning it into a ball shape. Continue to bunch up the tissue paper as you go. And when you feel like it looks as big as a cherry should look like, then cut off the rest of the tissue paper. Then take any color floral tape. The color doesn't matter again. Then floral tape it tightly catch the tissue paper and eventually tape the whole tissue ball and cover it all up. I also like to smooth the floral tape as you go to prevent the obvious tape lines. I also like to squeeze down the top where the wire is sticking out, trying to imagine what a cherry is like on the top where the stem is. You don't need the shape to be a perfect sphere either. When you are done covering it up, I also like to try to flatten the bottom so that it will stand on its own with the wire sticking out from the top. Next, get a good red color acrylic paint that you want your cherry color to be. I'm using this bright red acrylic with the sponge brush and covering the green tape. Acrylic paint should dry quick and when it is dry, take glossy Mod Podge and add that on top of the red paint. Then cut your wire where you like the stem of the cherry, then use the floral tape to cover the stem. If your stem is already green, this floral tape is optional. I do like to emphasize a bigger width at the end of the cherry stem. Then shape your stem and make as many as you like. I do think the cake looks better with more embellishments. I will be adding five cherries in between the meringues, but you could add as many as you like. You could add just one in the center, add more than five. Definitely get creative with embellishing the cake. Next, I tied a bow with red ribbon and glued that to every other scallop tips. You could choose any color ribbon. If you had any areas you want to cover or distract, you can cover it up with the ribbon. I did have some messy glued areas and you can't even tell after the ribbons are added. I also finished up the smaller box, the one that I showed you earlier, it's a little smaller and love how it paired all together. Try making them yourself. Please like this video below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.